Hi, I'm William. I'm Kina. And we are the Nerdy Weds. And today we are at Enjoy Spirits Distillery. And what does that have to do with gaming, you might ask? Well, we're exploring game scenes today and we're starting with Distilled, one of William's favorite games. Yeah, this is a one to five player game, ages 14 plus. Uh, it takes about 30 minutes per player. Uh, it is published by Paverson Games. Uh, this is a great game of kind of set collection kind mm -hmm. of, uh, God, it's so hard to nail down mm -hmm. the genre of this particular game in the mechanics. But, but it is really easy to nail down the theme. And we wanted to see how realistic is the theme in this game versus reality. So let's go ahead and explore. Yeah, join us. The premise of Distilled is that you've inherited a distillery and it's up to you to make a success out of it by upgrading your equipment and making and selling the best spirits over your competitors. This is done over seven rounds and each round has four phases, the market phase, the distilled phase, the sell phase, and the aging phase. So let's talk briefly about the market phase. In the market phase, you can buy a card from the basic market there's yeast, water, one of each type of sugar, and two different types of barrels. You can buy up to two cards from the basic market per round. You can also buy cards from the premium market, which include upgrade cards, premium ingredients, and items that let you upgrade your distillery. You, the last thing you can buy is a new recipe, which will give you points when you sell it. The next phase is the distilled phase which William is going to talk about. But before he does that, I want to talk about mashing because in the game, this isn't really named and the process kind of bleeds from the market phase into the distilled phase. It's really simple. All you're doing is you're adding your yeast, your water and your sugars and alcohol for each of your sugars. That's it. In an actual distillery, this is where you would do your mashing. So right here is where you ferment, and then right here is where you ferment and mash. This phase of the game is called the still phase. You've mixed your mash into the, the still. Now, in this phase, it's probably the most interesting and thematic phase of the game, because in distilling, once you've gotten down to your actual non-low wines mix, you're going to remove the heads from the mix, which is the, the alcohol that comes out at the beginning of the distilling process. That can contain a lot of uh, volatile chemicals in it, like uh, methanol for one, because uh, it has a much lower um, evaporation point than ethanol, which is the only reason why we can drink ethanol is because methanol uh, evaporates at a much lower temperature. So you get rid of the beginning phase, and then at the end, when you get past the hearts, when you get past where the liqueur coming out tastes good, you get rid of what's left, and that's the tails. And the way that's expressed in the game is you've mixed your batch, you fermented it by adding the alcohol, you then remove the top card and the bottom card of your shuffled mix, that is removing the heads and removing the tails. What you have left is your liqueur. Whatever it is you've made at that point is determined by the chart and what sugars you have involved. So the next phase is the sell phase and that's where you're gonna tally up your victory points and the money that you make, which is based on the value of the bottles and the barrels that you put your whiskey in. And you'll have a choice whether you're gonna age the whiskey or if you're gonna go ahead and sell it choose to barrel your spirits uh, and age them. The longer you leave your spirits in the aging process, the more points are gonna be worth at the end of the game. Now some examples are barrels, just like these. But there are other kinds of barrels in the game, such as uh, the terracotta amphora and the uh, Kevry barrel, however you pronounce that. So. This is the aging phase where you've barreled your, your spirit and you're allowing it to age over time, taking on flavors 
from the wood or whatever other materials uh, the spirit has been placed into. So you've decided to age your spirit. Now you're not going to sell it this round. So the next round, you're not going to get any money. You have the option at this point to go ahead and sell off four up to four victory points for four coins to use in the next market phase to help you get started in the next phase. The other thing you're going to do is immediately when you place your barrel in the warehouse, you're going to take a random flavor off the top of the deck, unless you have a card that modifies this, and you're going to add that to the bottom of your stack. Do not look at this card. It is a lot of fun at the end of the game, or when you go to sell that, to read out loud all the different wonderful flavors that could end up in your alcohol. It could be anything between honey and gym socks um, and manure. So at the end of each sell phase, you're going to have the option to either take your barrel out of storage from aging or age it again. At that point, you're then going to add another flavor card if you've decided to age. So the purpose of adding those flavor cards is that you want the whiskey to taste good it, because in real life, you want the whiskey to taste good, right? So that's how the theme plays out in the game. You will get more victory points if you add in some flavor cards and you also get more points for the more flavor cards that you have. So in that way, the theme really does uh, fit what happens in real life. So final thoughts, we've just walked around the distillery and explored the phases of the games of the game and how that plays out in reality. And let's talk about if the theme measures up to reality. It really certainly does. Not only from this distillery tour uh, that we did, but other distilleries that we've been to and I've been to, and also all the videos I've ever watched about distilling and, and you know whiskey making and all that stuff the game really does match up very well to yeah. the theme. It really does. To the, for, to the real life distilling process. For someone like me who's not um, into distilling as much as you are and, and don't look at extra videos and things of that nature, just for someone who has played the game a couple of times and who has gone to a few distilleries, you can clearly see how they measure, how it measures up and that it fits reality. Even going into Enjoy Distillery, they have signs up and then they have like the, the basic process, steps one through four, that type of thing. Yeah. And it matches up so, um, perfectly with what you're doing in the game. And, and yes, you're making your, your, your spirits and trying to make the best wine and the best wine. You see where my head is at? I I'm on wine right now. Wine, but wine al wine. Best alcohol uh, and sell it. And you can see that right there at the distillery that we went to, even when she had us tasting the different uh, whiskey and, and the, the rum was really tasty. Yes, it was. And I'm not a big whiskey drinker, and the, I even thought the whiskey was good. And she was showing us the difference in, in the color, uh, the lighter color versus the darker color with it being aged much longer. Yeah. Um, will give you that nice brown color. And that is something that you're doing in the game. If, if you age it, then you get the, this one whiskey versus, you know, not aging it and or not having um, certain uh, amounts of ingredients, then you have to have a different type of alcohol. Yeah. And so all of that really played out when we did a, a not necessarily a tour, but we did speak with the owner, one of the owners, Natalie. And she talked about some of those things. And it was really cool to listen to her talk about those things and have a basic understanding of it just from playing the game. Yeah. It, yeah, you're not going to learn how to distill from the game. But like you just said, you're going to get a really basic understanding of the processes involved. The equipment, you know, when you upgrade your distillery with different equipment and and things. Even there, they had different types of stills, and they had different types of uh, of um, 
fermenting bat, vats and in all the the things, you know, barrels and storage and it was just really neat to see you know how they're handling the processes of creating these three different spirits that they have there. They have the moonshine, they have the rye whiskey, and they have the rum. What they have is um, really tasty and their process is pretty on, on point and very interesting. It was very interesting to uh, learn the little bit that we did. I would go again. Oh, yeah. And I would recommend if anyone's in the area to go to it because it's a very beautiful grounds and they have a really awesome living mascot, which you, their dog, yeah, which their you dog. really enjoyed. I did. Uh, I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, Rum, Rum Runner uh, <laughs> was his name, but he just goes by Rum now because he's getting old and he can't run anymore. So now he's just Rum. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, we had a great day there. So if you're yeah. ever in the area, go check them out. It's worth the drive, and you will leave with a bottle of everything at least. <laughs> a one of each of their bottles. Uh, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and we left with our uh, game that we came there with. So <laughs> we recommend playing the game because it's a, it's a fun game, and the theme is really present within the game. Yes. But it also fits reality. So... Uh, great, it's one of the most game. thematic games I've ever played. Uh, I think that's it for this yeah. video. Yeah. Like she said, check out Distilled, uh, made by Paverson Games, uh, and ch definitely check out Enjoy Distillery. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, stay nerdy.